Good day, everybody. Welcome to TechSAP Alive. Jim Warren here. I've got Chuck Fuller, our consultant extraordinaire, <laughs> our, our ambassador of quality. Uh, Welcome, Chuck. Thank glad you very much. To, glad to have you back. Thank you for inviting been a while. me again. I appreciate it's been it. A while. Yeah, it's been a little bit, so and I'm glad so, to be here. Uh, guess what? I think it's supposed to get a little cooler this week. This week, it's supposed yeah, to get supposed cooler to, on us. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. So, and it's December. We're getting kind of holiday season. People are getting used to the holidays, but we still want to get some work done before Christmas. There's a lot of a lot of work that needs to be done between yep. now and the end of the year. Yeah, uh, a lot of private entities want to open up. Mm -hmm. A lot of state. Uh, jobs need to have need to finish, uh, their, up, need to finish up their detour sections. Yeah. Need to finish up some sections so that they can drive safely yep. uh, through the uh, Christmas holidays yeah. and uh, and then into uh, the new year into twenty twenty three. So we've got so. we've got to pave in a little bit cooler weather than absolutely the normal 90, 90 100 degree Texas weather. Absolutely. And so we, these these are things we want to talk about today. We're today per, today's purpose is to talk about cold, cold weather, weather paving. What we need to be looking at some. So what what do we need to look at? What yeah, yeah. So uh, you know what what effects uh, does the uh, cooler weather have on your on your paving uh, procedures? What well, does what does effect have on it with the uh, the cold weather? You know. Well, I mean, it goes all the way back to the plant, right? Absolutely, it goes so, all I mean, the way back. We're to starting the plant. to plant, and and you know, we're going to go through some calculations a little bit later on. Show you a little right. uh, studio magic here, and, and 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 go through some of that kind of stuff. But but I think it's important that we we as we go through this, we understand. It starts at the asphalt plant. Absolutely. And then, you know, we've got to make it, we've got to store it, we've got to load it, we've got to ship it, we've got to unload it, we've got to lay it, and then we get around to finally compacting it. Right. But anywhere along that cycle, we've got a potential to lose heat. Absolutely. And it loses heat the whole time. Yeah. The whole time. Once, it never once, heats up. It never heats up. <laughs> once it comes out of that asphalt plant, that's that's it. It's, it's losing heat the whole time. And, yeah. and we both know that... Uh, Heat equals density. I mean, yeah. you've got to have the heat there to be able to have right. the compaction right. for that material to flow together and to, mm -hmm. and to be able to, uh, to to be able to get our air voids. Yep, absolutely, we have to have the temperature. We right. have to have the temperature to be able to have that happen. So uh, again, I, I mean, it's pretty obvious to everybody. But but the greater the temperature extreme, the more we got to pay attention to it. You know, and it, when you know when everything's ninety and you know that sort of stuff, it's not not that big a problem. Right. And we'll go through some examples there, but. But once we start getting into these, these you know, 60s, 50s, 40s, 40s, that kind of range in there, we're really starting to see some significant heat loss that we've got to identify, we've got to adjust for. We can't just pave as usual. And it's just a pavement, it's just, it's just the attention to detail is Absolutely. what we're going to talk yep. about. And we're going to yep. give you some tools to help with that and then also some observations. You know, we need to make mm -hmm. some observations. and. And everybody on the paving crew needs to be aware of that. Everybody on the paving crew needs to be aware that it's going to be a little bit tougher to, to get density. It's going to be a little bit tougher to maintain your rolling patterns. It's going to just be a little bit tougher. But if you pay attention to the details, you can pave. Yeah. You can pave when it's 40 degrees. Um, We're just going to be a little closer together. A little together. closer together. <laughs> now, there comes a time when we can't pave, okay? We're too close together. I, I can't we gotta tell you. we got to go. It's time to go to the house. Yeah. That's my chocolate. I can't tell you how many times after uh, a bad paving job be due to weather that the owner would say, wow, if I knew it was going to look like this, I never would have let you pave. <laughs> and and that's, that's important. That's, that's important. real important. You, as, as your temperature gets more extreme, yeah. your probability of success starts to drop. Absolutely. And you got to understand you're taking a much bigger risk of it not looking as good as it could. Absolutely. That texture, that surface appearance, and those kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, if you're willing to take that risk, right? but just understand that there's a risk there in, right. in that process. So, Absolutely. Um, let's, let's uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about it. I mean, you know, we're, we're in the studio here. I just finished a class and, and uh, you know, we're talking a lot about these these temperature measuring these surface temperature uh, guns, et cetera, and 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 they're great tools. Yeah. But again, they measure surface. Surface temperature. And that's not internal. And when when you start to get greater temperature deltas, you start to see more significant differences between what surface temperature is and what the internal, internal temperature is. So as long as we understand that, yeah. and we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, if we could you know, put stick a probe in there and measure it that way, yeah. um, that's going to give us a little bit more of internal, but again, 
most of us have got these. Most of us, and nobody. And, and, and you just missed the uh, what the Black Friday sale at, at, at Black, Northern at, Nor at uh, Tracker at, at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, they were and, fourteen uh, ninety-five for, a piece. Yeah. So. so Chuck bought them all, <laughs> yeah, all but, of them uh, in uh, in Austin. But as many times I've been out in the field, uh, internal temperatures, we we just don't have those. We have. You know, I've seen that. I've seen the surface thermometers. You know, mm -hmm. place them on the surface. But right. again, it's a surface temperature, right? right. And uh, the internal temperature is just as important uh, to mm -hmm. know and to to understand that again, temperature equals compaction, and we and we know that compaction equals density, and density equals performance. And we know that we have to be above ten percent air voids for it not to be permeable, right? right? You know, that's that's the rule of thumb is right. that if we're at ninety percent density or or ten percent air voids, which is way on the low side, right? But it's 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 doable from that point up. So that's what we yeah. have to pay attention to. And uh -huh. again, these are measuring surface temperatures, right. and they're not always as accurate as everybody thinks they are. So make right. sure that you calibrate them either with boiling water or with with your uh, ice, water. Ice, ice water, you know, so make sure that they that they uh, that they are calibrated and, and, and as if, much as possible. And if there's two of them out there, <laughs> yeah, let's no. let's make sure they're giving the rating the same result. Same result. Result. Sometimes they don't. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, I think I think kind of the 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 tenant today, even though we're about paving and cool weather, really we're talking about managing heat loss. Managing heat loss, exactly. And we're starting back at the plant, right? And and anywhere along that line, we have the potential to lose, have a have a you know have a some lose some temperature in the process, and and we've got to be able to look at every opportunity to try to manage that and 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 maintain heat right as possible. So the truck pulls underneath the silo, right, and we're going to have the silo door open, right, and that material is going to free fall into the truck, right, and multiple drops, multiple drops, but right. we're losing heat as we do that, right. right, right. As soon as you open up that silo, the heat is going to definitely uh, uh, dissipate. So the mix doesn't get hotter in transit? It get hotter in transit. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't get hotter right. in transit. But um, so you're going to have heat loss there. That's the first place that you have it at, right? You but know. If, but if what about tarps? Don't oh, tarps, sir? Absolutely. We need to tarp. The so, not the mesh tarps. Not the not the mosquito. The solid, the, yeah, not the mosquito tarp. Not the mosquito tarps. But the solid tarps, as soon as we get that, if we can cover that load yeah. up and, and completely cover it, right. where we don't have airflow in there, um, it's going to help we're, immensely we're, with it's your gonna heat help, you know, help the, the, the building of that crust. Uh, it's also going to help just maintain that temperature in a mass. In a mass. In right. a mass, mix is going to hold right. temperature a long time. But as soon as we start to spread it out underneath the screed, boy, then we really start to see some big, big temperature drops. You drop. know, another so, place that, uh, especially on belly dumps, on belly dumps, that front part of where the belly's at, where it opens, mm -hmm. a lot of them don't have that flap there. There's a flap that goes in front of that to prevent the wind from blowing okay. on that, that, that oh, area. Oh, blowing, blowing through there. Blowing through there on the bottom of the belly dump. Check your bottom of your belly dumps that you have that forward flap. They usually have them on both sides, but that forward flap is really where you know, it get, becomes crusted so that when you open that belly up, that first glob there is going to be crusted over and it's a big chunk. Okay. And now you have to deal with the chunk. Okay. So okay. that's, that's, that's. So go uh, find some old conveyor belting. That's right. If, some, the, if it's gone, build yourself a new flap. Absolutely. Get your mechanics busy. It's, and, and it's uh, simple. And doing it's that. simple to do, guys. It's really simple to do. But again, that makes any, sense. anything we can do to to keep that material from, from losing temperature mm -hmm. due to the transportation. So, okay. So. The mix gets to the job site, right? Okay, and we're going to start in the morning or start in the evening or whatever, and it's already cool. Okay, there's that thing been going around for as long as I've been around. Talks about you know in cooler weather, use the third or the fourth load. Don't use the first couple loads right. out of the silo um, because that may be a little bit cooler, cooler than the rest of it. So switching those switching those first couple loads up, even though we're paving out of order. Yeah. It may be better because what happens when we put that 300 degree asphalt in that steel, that MTV or yeah. that paver that's sitting out there at 50 degrees? What happens? It yeah. just sucks. It sucks that in. It sucks that heat out. Yes, so if we can start does. a little hotter, right? Okay, and I'll, just to use that material to help preheat the equipment, right? And then if we can run consistently, we'll be man managing. again managing that heat Maybe loss. Not. Uh, in the process. So that's so, that's a good thing as well. You bring up a good point about that. If you're using a material transfer device, uh, you don't want to just take that load all at once and throw it into the material transfer device. Because again, that material transfer device is cold. Right. What you want to do is kind of slowly put material in that material transfer device and let that material go through, you know, the conveyor 
into yeah. the truck, into the into the paver, but slowly work that thing. You just don't want to okay. dump 22 tons into that material transfer device because okay. it's going to lose temperature real, real quick. Okay. What you want to do is heat that whole system up, you know, as as you're going that first load or two okay. before you fill that whole material transfer device up. Okay, you know? that so, makes sense. Yeah, it just it's just to heat everything up. It's going to heat that whole the the, the conveyor up. It's going to heat your 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 bottom uh, section where it's holding the material that up. Okay, it's going to heat everything up, and that's well, good. It's real important to do. That 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 sounds good. So even even in that, so when we talk about you know everybody on deck, everybody's got to understand we got more challenges paving in cool weather, right? right and so right. you know we need to make sure, but when we're when we're ready to load the paver. Our joints are ready to go. I yeah. mean, we've got everything ready to go. We've got everything prepared. It's cut, it's tacked, Tacked. it's sweep. The motion's broke or whatever yeah. we're using yeah. is is we are we are ready to go once we get going and then we're gonna kinda keep it tight. And what about your rollers? Are your rollers fueled and watered and ready yeah, to go? Absolutely. <laughs> I can't stress enough. We were on a project and the the roller guy was was didn't have his didn't wouldn't water it up, you know. And they started paving. I was like, well, and then he, take, he takes off to go yeah. get water. And he takes off to go get water. And, and I was yeah. like, my That's goodness. That's the other thing. Bring the water to the paint. Bring the water to the <laughs> yeah. rollers and don't send the rollers to go get go get water. So, Again, particularly in this in this weather be prepared uh, situation your as well. Have your, have your rollers all, everybody lined up. We know the paving. And hopefully we all know which direction we're going, how wide we're paving, how thick we're paving. All that's already been talked about during the uh, pre-pave or, or the daily debriefs on the direction that we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve today uh, before it even starts. Because once you break that load and once you get that material in that transfer device, you've got to do we some continu go. continuous paving. Go. You gotta, gotta, you gotta go. pay attention uh, to detail. Because again, once you stop, you're in trouble. Again, you're starting to lose, you lose temperature again. Yep, you lose absolutely. Temperature. So the, the balancing of the production rates, the getting the number of trucks, you know, it's it's critical all the time, but in cool weather, it's even more critical. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we got to we got to make sure we're on deck there. Um, we talk about a rolling zone. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, as we kind of get into this, we'll talk about that. But but that area, you know, it, you know, we've talked about a lot of times is is a roller guy. You know, the the front of the rolling zone is the back of the paver, and the back of the rolling zone is a certain temperature. Right. Okay. And in cool weather. That's going to transition a lot quicker, and so that rolling zone, that area where the rollers zone. are going to be operating, may be a lot less. Oh yeah. Than than what we saw. I mean, we used to talk about you know, you know, at, at paving at night in cool weather. I want to see the eye, the eye, the whites of the eye of the roller operator because yeah. they need to be pretty tight in there, so they're rolling yeah. in that area where we where we're doing that pr pretty effectively. So, so. That, that temperature, uh, it's, if we're running a 64 minus 22, mm -hmm. right, and with Textot, it's the maximum temperature discharge is 325. Right. So we have 25 degrees variance, so most of the guys are gonna be dropping around 300. Okay. okay? So it's in the truck at 300, and, it's, and, and we have a, um, a specific area that we're gonna have to hit at the back of that paver mm -hmm. so that we can hit it. So what temperature is that? Is it 270? To, what's, the, what's the minimum temperature before a breakdown roller can achieve you know, what it needs to be doing? Is it 220? I don't know. I mean, it, it depends on the mix, right? Depend, I mean, and the thickness. And the thickness. It does definitely and, depends and, on the thickness. And, the, and as you said, the binder does make a difference. The binder makes I mean, a huge difference. I mean, if you start modifying the binder, that bottom temperature starts to creep up. Yep. And it ain't 175 anymore. Yes, that's you correct. You know, it's, now we're probably in the 200s because what's happening is, you know, that binder at the plant, it's very liquidy. We're, we're mixing and coating. Right. Out on the roadway, it's starting to become very viscous. And when it gets into place, that's it. You know, it's we're, we're gluing everything together into that's a big it. solid mass. And with that, transitional temperatures are are starting to be higher. Right. The more modifiers, the more those, those things are in there. So we've got to again mm -hmm. understand yeah. that as well. I want to, We're gonna we're gonna go through um, a couple things here. Uh, well, let's before we before we jump into that, uh, let's talk about dumping loads. Yeah. How many, so how many loads do you dump out in front of you? Boy, if it's cold, <laughs> again, I want to keep it tight, man. I want to dump one load. Maybe but, where. Yeah, but yeah. you got to pay attention because if you don't dump correctly, then you can create segregation. 
That's mm -hmm. another another way, especially right. you know if you're using a if you're using a shuttle buggy, not so much, but you really still got to pay attention to your dump techniques, and your guys got to really pay attention to it. You know, so know your temperatures when you're dumping, and know right. your temperatures behind the paver, so that right. you can kind of look at you know how much uh, temperature loss you have right. uh, during that process. But uh, yeah, not don't dump multiple loads. Dump one load at a time. You know, try to deal with that one at a time. And keep loading up. and keep so, up. So what happens when we run out of trucks? Yeah, so when you run out of trucks, we, we kind of have a knowledge or, or known temperature where we can't get any more compaction, and right. it's, it's about 160, 170. Somewhere in that range. Somewhere in that range. You certainly don't want to be breaking down at that point. No, no, so you're not going to get compactions. That's when the material is not going to be able to, to get compaction. So if we're at, if we stop the trucks or we have an issue where we don't have that continuous pave, what, at what point do you, do you, Cut a joint. Cut a joint. Cut a transverse yeah. joint yeah. And, and say we're going to start again. But you got material in the shuttle buggy, you got material in the paver, so there's this, this whole thought process that you're going to have to go through. And guess what? If we talk about this before it happens, right. what are we going to do when XYZ happens, right? right? And have that plan to where we can, we everybody knows, you know, the, mm -hmm. the dumper knows, the paver operator knows, the roller operator knows that, hey, we have a, an incident, we have a breakdown. Or we're talking are, to the truck foreman, you know, we're just, hey, this is, you know, we got to get this job done, but it's even more critical now that we're communicating. Back and and if I'm losing trucks or if I'm, you know, if there's a breakdown or something, I got to know because I got to be able to react in the field because right. if I let the material cool too much in, in the paver, yeah. in the hopper, it's going to be in a mass, right? Yep. Yep. And even in the head of material, it's going to start to cool, but but that's going to affect my texture. That's going to affect my ride. You know, if that material in the head of material cools off, the screen's going to rise up over it. And now that's I've got, correct. you know, now I've, you I've got a ride issue um, and, and, a, and then density issue. And then density so at issue. some point, and we don't really know what that number is, but that's something, like you said, Talk about it ahead of time. At what point do we just say, hey, let's cut our loss. Cut a transfer strong. And we'll waste this material and then keep everything in a mass. And then when we're back up to speed, we can set and go. That's right. And then we can make the best of the situation that we've got got to deal with. So, um, and, if, uh, and if any of you guys have ever seen the, uh, the video or the information on transverse joints, you can make a transverse joint pretty easy, yeah. you know, if you do it correctly. Right. So right. Uh, we have. It's not that bad of a it's deal. It's not that bad of a deal. It's a, right. it's it's some extra work, but it's better than having that material fail. seized up behind you. Yeah, you know, fail. Your, yeah. Okay, fail. So, so what I want to do is we're going to show you where to get some of these tools. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to run over here real quick, and uh, and then we're going to come back and we're actually going to use the tools and then show you how to do some stuff. So Absolutely. Look, we're going to jump over here real quick and we're going to show you, oop, I got to get the right right button. There, there you we go. go. Here's Texapa's website and it's texasasphalt.org right Texas there at the Asphalt. top. Texasasphalt.org. And then um, if you want information about education, events, resources, we're going to go to the resource page and then we're going to go down here to the placement and compaction all hands. This is Chuck's baby right here. He developed yeah. a lot of this stuff, and it talks about, again, what we're, we're communicating. We're communicating. But what I want to do is over here on the left side. There you go. Down here to resources. There it is. And uh, there's a bunch of resources in here, and these are all free and downloadable and that kind of stuff. But what we've got in here, we've got um, some apps. Uh, here's a Pave Cool app. Um, here's some balancing production rate apps. Caterpillar's got an app. We've got a spreadsheet in here, an instructional video. It's an Excel spreadsheet that shows you how to balance that paver yeah. to the plant, to the trucks, to the exactly. rollers. And it's a great tool. I mean, we should be using this tool all the time. All the time. And then, of course, the apps that we have, they're both for uh, Android and for, for iPhones. Yeah. And um, absolutely, those, those apps are just unbelievable, uh, great tools to utilize. Mm -hmm. uh, we were on a project in San Antonio, and this was in... Uh, this might have been May, okay. and it was it was it was it was a little chilly. It was like 74, 75 degrees, but the wind was howling. The wind was going 35, 40 miles an yep. hour. It was going once, and we put that in that paid cool app. And holy smokes, our our the information, <laughs> the time that we had for compaction was it was next to con nothing. Confirmed what you were running it into in the it field. It confirmed exactly what we were running into the field, and that was that we could not get it to compact. 
uh, correctly. It, it looked segregated. It looked it looked cold. We all know what cold texture change texture change yeah, is exactly. And we know that we didn't get the we know we didn't get the density. So in other words, we were going to have some issues. Good deal. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little studio magic here and zip our. Chuck's going to grab the green right. screen. I'm going to do the studio magic. And we're going to pull this across here. And ah. there, ain't that cool? There we go. All right. Got it. Uh, got our stuff here. Let, Let me, me get this out of the way here. A get bit. this out of the way. And so this is the Multicool program. There's Pavecool. There's also Multicool. Again, if you go on your search browser and type in either one of these, these will pop up. Um, you can also, um, this is a, 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 a Windows-based version of it, but there's, there's uh, app-based versions of these out there as well. And we just want to kind of go through this really quick and show a couple examples and show how the time impacts. And what right. this is, these are thermodynamic calculations and way beyond my capability here, but thank God there's smart people out there that can do this sort of <laughs> stuff. But they can take all these variables of the time of day, the ambient conditions, uh, the type of mix we're doing, the thickness of that kind of stuff, and, and just kind of plug it through. Right. And so what we've got in here is kind of maybe an extreme case. Right. So we've got, you know, 90 degrees out, uh, clear and dry, though if it's 90 out, probably the surface is, is well beyond that. We'll put 100 degrees in here. I got a five inch layer. Right. Okay. So we're laying a base course. Laying a base course, 300 degrees coming out, and this is the delivery temperature, not the mixed production temperature. Right. This is the delivery showing temperature. up on the job site. And then whatever our stop temperature is, and again, this can vary based on the mix we've got. So if we plug all that information and we push the button, ends up into 100 and two hours. Yeah. We got two hours to compact it. So in the middle of summer or 90 degrees out, we got a lot of time Absolutely. to compact this material. And so what you'll find out is if you, if you do a little work with this and play around with this, and the neat thing about this, it's real simple to change numbers. So we're gonna go in here real quick and let's just drop this down to four inches. Four inches. And click to calculate. And now we've got, we went, we lost 35 minutes, 35 minutes in one inch. For one inch. Okay. Can you imagine that? We're still laying a base course, but I yeah. mean, can you imagine? And you still got plenty of time based on the temperature, but yeah. still, that okay. is an effect that, wow. Let's go to, let's cut that in half. So where are we at now? Now to 35 minutes. Yeah. So now, I mean, we've still got, we still got, a got plenty time. of time we still got in plenty order of time. to do this, but this is under very good conditions. Absolutely. Under conditions. So let's, let's, uh, let's, let's take it down even further. Let's go to an inch. One inch. Say it's a Tom mix. A Tom mix, land a Tom okay. mix. Now we're down to 12 minutes. 12 minutes. So from two inches to one inch, from two inches to one inch, it went from 35 minutes to 12, 12 minutes. minutes. And when we think about this, this is all the rolling that's needed to get density. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily sometimes just the front roller. Right. It may be multiple rollers. Multiple if I got rollers. intermediate rollers in there, and if we had a lot of extra time, we could show you how this kind of coordinates with uh, the spreadsheet, yep. the balancing production spreadsheet. Actually, do I have that up here? I think I do. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why we have the tall mixes at the temperatures that we yeah. do is because we recognize the fact that if if we don't, if we don't get them, yeah. we're not going to be able to. We're not going to be able to seat that material. So if you can slide a little Ooh, bit let me, let me that way, there you go. Okay, right there. There this you go. is this is a piece out of the balancing production rate we I use for. The, it's the whole the whole sheet looks a little bit differently, but um, that's that, really a cool Excel spreadsheet. By that's the way, everybody what, should be able to utilize this. It's really that's easy what the do. whole sheet looks like, and it takes all the variables that that a contractor has to face right. in order to capture this. But I just want to look at this one area here, and what this does, it calculates basically, you know, if I know how wide my roller is right. and how what my paving width is, okay, and I account for some overlap. And then I, I need how many passes to cover and then the total number of coverages to get density and, and all that sort of stuff. It'll calculate elapsed time. Right. And so if I look down here, this says I've got 6.8 minutes. Mm. Okay. So at, at a 250 foot zone. So what, you know, what if my number was pretty small? I got 12 minutes and I can include my other rollers. I may actually be running out of time. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's on a good day. That's on a good day. On a good day. So, you know, if you know, what if this was three hundred? Well, now it goes up. Up. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good and point. then, what if it's a cold day? What if I really want to tighten things up? 
Well, now I can cover it pretty quickly. Yep. So again, the, the idea behind of keeping things tight yep. allows me to put all that compactive effort in the same mix viscosity or the same mix temperature range where my, my chance of getting the right amount of density is, is good the whole time. And again, you can add rollers. That's the deal. When we're paying attention to temperatures, we want to pave, we need to pave. We Come on back to, in. We, okay. Yeah. We, have to, we have to get things done. There we are. Yeah. Uh, we, have to get, we have to get things done. We might need to add another breakdown roller. Absolutely. And, and that, that spreadsheet that you just ran uh, really focuses on the rollers, the width of the rollers, your amplitude setting for the rollers, I'll, I'll the go speed back. of the rollers. Okay, go back here. What's 78 times 2? It's 156. 156. Because I've done this a couple times. Okay, and look at let's just look at the look at my ro how much area I can cover in feet per minute when I, if I double that by going to two rollers. Okay? Wow, significant over a 50 percent over increase. a 50 percent increase. And now you're rolling, and what we talk about is not rolling like this, but in rolling echelon. in yeah. echelon where we're covering the mat in one pass. And look what I'm doing down here. I'm yeah. Great, great impacts there. Absolutely. That's, um, a, that's a huge, important part of this is that that really has the effect on your rolling mm -hmm. um, system. And, and guys, it's, it's, it's again, uh, you, I know we're limited on resources, mm -hmm. but, but if we already know the answer, <laughs> which is we're going to struggle with density, grab another breakdown roller and roll yeah. an echelon. Then you know? that lo allows you to pave, get paid, paved. make a good job. And yep. it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yep. Okay, I know we're, so, we're kind of running on time here, all right, but so I want to change. What we've done is we've gone from 90 degrees, okay, okay at, uh, let's go back to two inches here. Okay. Okay, at two inches. We've gone 90 degrees to 60 degrees. Okay. Okay, so obviously what's our time going to be? Yeah, way less. Way less, okay. So let's click on the button here. And so it, what it was, is, was before it was 35 minutes. Right. And now we're 24. So again, that's a, a third, of the, of the third of our time, time cut across here, and we're still 60 is kind of that's easy. De yeah, it's easy. I mean, okay. Let's let's look at what happens if that's one inch. That's the issue. Ooh, wow. Yeah, that's it cut it by two thirds. Yeah. So now we're down to eight inches, eight eight minutes, and I think any to me. Anything under like 15, I'm kind of like going, whoa, 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 I better have my ducks in a row. And, and again, think about this. And this is, this is just the temperature losses that you have. But what right. if you had to do some hand work? What if you've got to oh. work around a manhole yep. or a water valve or, or a curb and gutter or an intersection? Your temperature is going to drop even more. Your going to drop even more. And that's why it's so important to discuss this during, before, <laughs> before you start yep. and, or at the end of the shift, before the shift or end of the shift. That yep. debrief is so important that everybody's on the same page. Guys, yep. we got a lot of handwork today. Let's keep it in tight. Let's keep our whacker packers. Let's keep our rollers in. Let's keep them all in tight. Let's try to do the best we can to make the best, you know, the best of this situation. Again, 60 degrees is that's a that's a Should doable okay. temperature. Absolutely, it's doable. Just got to pay attention. All right. Well, so what other conditions? Uh, wind. What do you think about oh, wind? Oh, okay. That, that's, okay. That's we got, the one that gets we got, me. We're one inch. We got. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to an inch and a half. Let's okay. be a little bit more. Realistic. Realistic. Kind of, okay. And we got a regular. And so we've got what? Sixteen minutes. Sixteen minutes. Okay, that should be doable. Yeah. Okay. Right now we got a five mile an hour wind. Okay. All right. So okay, what's going to happen is the weather's going to change. The weather's going to the weather patterns are going to shift from the south to the north. Got a big wind coming in from the north for yeah. next next couple of weeks. We're supposed to get a big weather pattern shift. And so let's say it goes up to maybe twenty five mile an hour. There you go. Oop, not five hundred twenty five. That's too much. That's a little bit. Um, too much. So, so what's that going to do with our time? Yeah, just check it out. Okay, let's see. Well, again, we dropped three minutes. Again, oh, wow. that could be the difference sometimes. And you've talked about yes. this a lot. If you're not paying attention. That's correct. You if you're don't. not monitoring the temperature and you're not, you're not understanding what's going on, right? Absolutely. And, and you've talked about what TJ is saying. TJ Young, I mean, I, I like his rule of thumb is every 10 degrees ambient temperature that you have movement, you really need to look at your, your, uh, your, your rolling pattern. pattern. Okay. So you might have a standard seven pass rolling pattern, you know, where mm -hmm. you're vibrating up to the, it might increase to right. where it's going to take you a little bit more to get that, to achieve your optimum density. That and in that for. case, that extra roller certainly that would be helpful. That extra roller definitely would be. Yeah, absolutely. So again, that's inch and a half. So let's, uh, so let, okay, let's, let's go extreme here. 
Let's go 45 degrees. That's when we start to kind of run and then start. That's typically where we really, you start know. Start to go, and, hmm, yeah. what should we be doing? And, and by the specification, we can lay. Yeah. That's, a, that's another deal. That's the other deal that we're, we're paying attention to. So it's inch a, and a half, 45 degrees. Yeah. Now we're down to 13 minutes. Yeah. But you know, the one thing about 7622 that I've run into is that cessation temperature. We think it may be down here at 170 because that's what the spec says. That's what the spec says. Right? What if it's actually 200. needs to be 200? Yeah, that, and that's probably more likely what it is. And now we went from 13 minutes to eight minutes. Eight minutes. And now we're like, holy moly. <laughs> right. So we got to really understand this. And then again, is, is what mixer we're using, what binder we're using, what's our thickness, and what's our ambient conditions. And right. as conditions change, from you know 60 to 45 or something like you could get that easy in a shift in a shift easy and it could be from the beginning start morning to the afternoon absolutely or, or it could afternoon. be from the evening into the morning and it could be going one way or the other and we're obviously going to need to change our rolling pattern substantially in order to make sure that we get our density and also just the mix is going to look good and we got good texture and we get good ride and again, we kind of we, we we know this. We know that we're fixing to enter into this. I, uh, and this is the this is the issue is that we know we're fixing to do this. We know right. we're it's coming. It's, it's here. Coming. It's here this week. And uh, and we know we're going to lay. We, you know we have obligations. We have you know we have things that we have to get done. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about it and combat it now. Let's know the answer before the questions asked. Right? Like, can I pave tomorrow when it's thirty and lightly rainy? Okay. You know, let's, well, not a good idea. Not a good idea. But uh, I mean, everybody's got one of these. Yep. Everybody's got the weather app. You know, right. So you can look and you can forecast out the rest of the week and, and you can start making good right. decisions uh, it, to give us good quality. So it, let's go back, pull this out of the way. We're so, done with that. Okay. We're done with screen magic. Screen okay. magic is we'll go back to, uh, back to our, our normal operation here as we kind of start wrapping this up. But Get back let's there, talk Mr. about a couple of takeaways, Chuck. I just want people to walk away from this. As Absolutely. A, is so, so we can pave in cooler temperatures. Absolutely. If we get our ducks, if, if we understand we, what's going on. If we plan. If we plan. Yeah. And we talk about it and we look at the weather and we know what our options are. Right. As far as planned operations, loadout, tarps, uh, distances, uh, you know, getting the equipment warmed up, being prepared, being yeah. able to continuously pave so the pave, so the equipment doesn't cool off. Right. And 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 then having that discussion as a, is 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 if we've got to sit out there a long time, at what point do we just say, enough's enough, let's cut it, you know, let's reset. Right. You know, and reset down, and then and then then you can get that area rolled, and so then we're going to have good performance all the way across. Yeah. And then we could pick back up and, and go again, and, it's, and and keep it on, keep it moving down yeah. the road. And if we got a lot of handwork, if we have a parking lot, or if we have a lot of handwork, just be aware of it. Pay attention. Have your rollers right there behind you. Yeah. Have them right there, yeah. ready to as go. As soon as it's ready, yeah, and, and, roll, it and roll it in, and uh, and you can be successful with it. I mean, again, we you can be successful if you yep. prepare for it, you communicate about it, you debrief before it happens, and we have a game plan. And when we also have a game plan, we have a game plan when something happens. You know, we have mm -hmm. a game plan, an alternate plan. And again, if you go to my resource page, where, yep. <laughs> where my like we just showed you. Where we yep. showed you, we have a ton, a ton of resources there, including the daily debriefs. Yep. Uh, in other words, what do we do when this happens? What do we do when we have a breakdown? What do we do when that happens? And again, uh, I can't stress enough that these need to be utilized by Everybody. everybody on the dang, yeah. everybody should have one. Of Roller these. operators. Roller have this. operators should have yep. these. Everybody should Christmas have Christmas presents. If you're looking for Christmas I'm presents, you, yeah. it's the best <laughs> thing to have on a crew, and uh, it's the it's the number one thing that's going to keep you out of trouble. Okay. Mm. So if we know that we got a cold area, we know that we're not going to get compaction. It might be better to saw cut that area out and start again with another transitional point okay. and move forward. There you go. So, there you go. Simple as that. So simple as that. Takeaway is good. Takeaway is good. Yep. So. Um, Pay attention. We're managing heat loss. That's yeah, what we're that's doing. That's what we're doing, managing and, heat uh, loss. And we've got to just ex you know, know what our expectations are, uh, know when things are kind of going, okay, we can do this. And then you know, when your gut feel says, when your gut says, mm, maybe not, then that's it, may be, it may be time, to, time, to, maybe time no. to stop. You know. It's probably time uh, to stop. But good deal. Well, Chuck, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jim, for inviting always, me out Always again. a pleasure. And yeah. uh, 
I wish everybody a happy holidays, Merry Absolutely. Christmas, Merry and Christmas. Happy New Year. And, and we will safe. see you next year. We're going to make a couple changes next year uh, with Tex Apple Live. We're going to rename it Everyday Asphalt, I think is what we're going to call about it. Good. And we're going to focus heavily on each month. We'll either be talking about maintenance, materials, design, or construction. So we're, what we're doing is we're taking our, our uh, engineering essentials course. Right. And we're taking that to the next level. Deeper dive. And we're going to add that, add those, some deeper dives and bring in some really smart people. Not me. But, uh, well, <laughs> Not Chuck's me. smart. Chuck's smart. Some really Criti smart people. Some critical He's thinkers. smart. Yeah, some, so. some really smart people in here. And talk about a lot of stuff that really gets into the, gets a little bit more into the weeds because we've got a really strong engineering base. Thank you guys for for every month coming in here and listening Excellent. to us. And and uh, we're excited about next year. We're excited about what, what we're going to be doing. Still going to be on the third Thursday at 3 o'clock. So you can still mark that in your calendar, and we'll be sending out some, some information on that uh, shortly. Absolutely. Perfect. I... So Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And we will see you in 2023. Absolutely.